Legendary Passages, Episode 63, The Sanctuary of Heracles, A Tour of Thebes, from Pausanias' Description of Greece. The next six episodes will be our final review of Heracles and his family for quite a while. This time, we shall cover Theban monuments to Cadmus, Heracles, and several gods. After the Ismenian Hill and Manto's Chair, the tradition of the laurel-bearer is discussed as Heracles was one of those boys. After the tomb of Canthus is the house of Amphitryon, where his wife Alcmena gave birth to Heracles. The tomb of Heracles' children is here also, as well as the chastiser's stone, which ended his madness. At the sanctuary of Heracles, there is a marble statue of him called Champion, and an ancient wooden one made by Daedalus, after Heracles found and buried his son on Acaria. The twelve labors are depicted in carvings, except for the Augean stables and the Stymphalian birds. And of course, there is a gymnasium and a race course. Lastly are stories of Cadmus and his family. The oracle at Delphi told Cadmus and his tribe to follow a specific cow, and when it finally laid down, to there build the city of Thebes. Cadmus himself built an altar to Athena on the spot. The bridal chamber of his wife Harmonia is now in ruins, but the spot where the muses sang at their wedding is in the marketplace. The bridal chamber of their daughter Semel is forbidden to all men, and contains a log that fell from heaven. Next time, the story of Heracles' seventh labor, the Cretan Bull. The Sanctuary of Heracles, a legendary passage from Pausanias' Description of Greece, translated by W. H. S. Jones. Not far from the gate is a common tomb, where lie all those who met their death when fighting against Alexander and the Macedonians. Hard by they show a place where, it is said, Cadmus, he may believe the story he likes, sowed the teeth of the dragon which he slew at the fountain, from which teeth men came up out of the earth. On the right of the gate is a hill sacred to Apollo. Both the hill and the god are called Ismenian, as the river Ismenus rose by the place. First at the entrance are Athena and Hermes, stone figures, and named Pronai, of the foretemple. The Hermes is said to have been made by the Ideas, the Athena by Scopus. The temple is built behind. The image is in size equal to that at Brachidae, and does not differ from it at all in shape. Whoever has seen one of these two images, and learnt who has the artist, does not need much skill to discern, when he looks at the other, that it is a work of Canacus. The only difference is that the image at Brachidae is of bronze, while the Ismenian is of cedar wood. Here there is a stone on which, they say, used to sit Manto, the daughter of Tiresias. This stone lies before the entrance, and they still call it Manto's chair. On the right of the temple are statues of women made of stone, said to be portraits of Heniochi and Pyrrha, daughters of Creon, who reigned as guardians of Laodamus, the son of Ateocles. The following custom is, to my knowledge, still carried out in Thebes. A boy of noble family, who is himself both handsome and strong, is chosen priest of Ismenian Apollo for a year. He is called Laurel Bearer, for the boys wear wreaths of laurel leaves. I cannot say for certain whether all alike who have worn the laurel dedicate by custom a bronze tripod to the god, but I do not think it is the rule for all because I do not see many votive tripods there. But the wealthier of the boys do certainly dedicate them. Most remarkable, both for its age and for the frame of him who dedicated it, 
is a tripod dedicated by Amphitryon for Heracles after he had worn the laurel. Higher up than the Ismenian sanctuary, you may see the fountain which they say is sacred to Ares, and they add that a dragon was posted by Ares as a sentry over the spring. By this fountain is the grave of Canthus. They say that he was brother to Melia and son to Ocean, and that he was commissioned by his father to seek his sister, who had been carried away. Finding that Apollo had Melia, and being unable to get her from him, he dared to set fire to the precinct of Apollo that is now called the Ismenian Sanctuary. The god, according to the Thebans, shot him. Here, then, is the tomb of Canthus. They say that Apollo had sons by Melia, to wit, Teneris and Ismenus. To Teneris, Apollo gave the art of divination, and from Ismenus, the river got its name. Not that the river was nameless before, if indeed it was called Ladon before Ismenus was born to Apollo. On the left of the gate, named Electran, are the ruins of a house where, they say, Amphitryon came to live when exiled from Tiryns because of the death of Electrion, and the chamber of Alcmena is still plainly to be seen among the ruins. They say that it was built for Amphitryon by Trophinus and Agamedes, and that on it was written the following inscription, When Amphitryon was about to bring hither his bride, Alcmena, he chose this as a chamber for himself, and Cassian, Trophinius, and Agamedes made it. Such was the inscription that the Thebans say was written here. They show also the tomb of the children of Heracles by Megara. Their account of the death of these is in no way different from that in the poems of Paniasis and of Stesichorus of Himera. But the Thebans add that Heracles, in his madness, was about to kill Amphitryon as well, but before he could do so, he was rendered unconscious by the blow of the stone. Athena, they say, threw at him this stone, which they name Chastiser. There are portraits of women in relief, but the figures are, by this time, rather indistinct. The Thebans call them witches, adding that they were sent by Hera to hinder the birth pangs of Alcmena. So these kept Alcmena from bringing forth her child. But Historis, the daughter of Tiresias, thought of a trick to deceive the witches, and she uttered a loud cry of joy in their hearing that Alcmena had been delivered. So the story goes that the witches were deceived and went away, and Alcmena brought forth her child. Here is the sanctuary of Heracles. The image of white marble is called Champion, and the Thebans Xenocritus and Ubius were the artists. But the ancient wooden image is thought by the Thebans to be by Daedalus, and the same opinion occurred to me. It is dedicated, they say, by Daedalus himself, as a thank-offering for a benefit. For when he was fleeing from Crete in small vessels which he had made for himself and his son Icarus, he devised for the ship's sails an invention as yet unknown to the men of those times, so as to take advantage of a favorable wind and outsail the oared fleet of Minos. Daedalus himself was saved, but the ship of Icarus is said to have overturned as he was a clumsy helmsman. The drowned man was carried ashore by the current to the island, then without a name, that lies off Samos. Heracles came across the body and recognized it, giving it burial, where, even today, a small mound still stands to Icarus on a promontory jutting out into the Aegean. After this Icarus are named both the island and the sea around it. The carvings on the gables at Thebes are by Praxiteles, and include most of what are called the Twelve Labors. The slaughter of the Stymphalian birds and the cleansing of the land of Elis by Heracles are omitted. In their place is represented the wrestling with Antaeus. Thrasybilus, son of Lycus, and the Athenians who with him put down the tyranny of the Thirty, set out from Thebes when they returned to Athens, and therefore 
they dedicated in the sanctuary of Heracles colossal figures of Athena and Heracles, carved by Alchemides in relief out of pentalic marble. Adjoining the sanctuary of Heracles are a gymnasium and a race course, both being named after the god. Beyond the chastiser stone is an altar of Apollo, surnamed God of Ashes. It is made out of the ashes of the victims. The customary mode of divination here is from voices, which is used by the Smyrnaeans, to my knowledge, more than by any other Greeks. For at Smyrna also there is a sanctuary of voices outside the wall and beyond the city. The Thebans in ancient days used to sacrifice bulls to Apollo of the Ashes. Once, when the festival was being held, the hour of the sacrifice was near, but those sent to fetch the bull had not yet arrived. And so, as a wagon happened to be nearby, they sacrificed to the god one of the oxen, and ever since it has been the custom to sacrifice working oxen. The following story also is current among the Thebans. As Cadmus was leaving Delphi by the road to Phocis, a cow, it is said, guided him on his way. This cow was one bought from the herdsmen of Pelagon, and on each of her sides was a white mark like the orb of a full moon. Now the oracle of the god had said that Cadmus and the host with him were to make their dwelling where the cow was to sink down in weariness. So this is one of the places that they point out. Here there is in the open an altar and an image of Athena, said to have been dedicated by Cadmus. Those who think that the Cadmus who came to the Theban land was an Egyptian and not a Phoenician have their opinion contradicted by the name of this Athena because she is called by the Phoenician name of Anga and not by the Egyptian name of Sais. The Thebans assert that the part of their citadel where today stands their marketplace was in ancient times the house of Cadmus. They point out the ruins of the bridal chamber of Harmonia, and of one which they say was Semel's, into the latter they allow no man to step even now. Those Greeks who allow that the muses sang at the wedding of Harmonia can point to the spot in the marketplace where it is said that the goddesses sang. There is also a story that along with the thunderbolt hurled at the bridal chamber of Semel, there fell a log from heaven. They say that Polydorus adorned this log with bronze and called it Dionysus Cadmus. Near is an image of Dionysus, Onassis Medes made it of solid bronze. The altar was built by the sons of Praxiteles, 